This video is about the four fundamental forces in physics, and I want to note super quick that this entire series on particle physics that I'm doing is only going to cover the material that IB physics students specifically are expected to know. There is so much that you can say about particle physics and so much you can say about the four fundamental forces, but this video will only cover what you're expected to know as an IB physics student specifically. So the four fundamental forces are gravity, the weak nuclear force, the electromagnetic force, and the strong nuclear force. We've encountered some of these forces before, like obviously we've worked with gravity and the electromagnetic force, but we haven't worked with the weak and strong nuclear force so much. I have a few facts about the forces that you'll need to memorize. First of all, you can see I have them ordered from relative strength, where gravity is the weakest force and the strong nuclear force is the strongest force. We say that gravity is the weakest force because it requires just so much mass to create even an average sized force of gravity. Whereas for the electromagnetic force, it doesn't require an especially large amount of charged mass in order to create a very large electric or magnetic force. So we say the electromagnetic force is stronger than the force of gravity. The range of gravity and the electromagnetic force is infinite. Two objects at any distance can put a force of gravity on each other or an electromagnetic force on each other but you can see the weak and strong nuclear force cut off after very short amounts of distance. Gravity acts on all objects with mass, and we know the electromagnetic force acts on all objects with charge. The weak nuclear force acts on very specific parts of an atom, specifically leptons and quarks, and hadrons, because hadrons are made of quarks, and protons and neutrons are hadrons, so the weak force also acts on them. And the strong nuclear force acts on quarks, but not leptons. I've also listed the role that each force plays in the universe. Gravity holds things like stars, planets, solar systems, and galaxies together, and also obviously keeps us on Earth. The weak nuclear force is responsible for radioactive decay, specifically beta decay, which we'll talk about a lot, and neutrino interactions. The electromagnetic force attracts and repels electrically charged and magnetized objects, and it holds electrons and orbitals around atoms. And the strong nuclear force holds nucleons together. Otherwise, protons would be pushed apart by the electromagnetic force. The reason we call these the four fundamental forces is that all other forces in the universe that we experience are actually just one of these four. In fact, basically every force you experience in everyday life that isn't gravity is the electromagnetic force, which is a little surprising, but it actually makes sense when you consider that all objects are made of atoms. For example, if we have an apple, supported by the ground, the ground is applying a normal force up on the apple. So in previous units on force, we refer to that force as the normal force. But if you zoom up to the atomic level of the atom, what's actually happening here is that if you zoom up very close on how the apple is interacting with the floor, like on the atomic level, you would see that what's actually happening is that the electrons in the apple are actually repelling the electrons in the ground because they're both negatively charged. So the electrons in the apple are pushed up, the electrons in the ground are pushed down, and so the whole mass of the apple is pushed up. So those atoms experiencing the electromagnetic force is actually what causes the normal force to exist. So the normal force is actually just the result of the electromagnetic force occurring between particles in the atoms. One interesting implication of this is that the electrons in the atoms never actually physically make contact with each other. What we humans experience as physical contact between objects is actually just electrons repelling each other, and those electrons are never actually physically touching each other. They're being repelled by the electromagnetic force before they make contact with each other. I have separate video lectures on gravity and the electromagnetic force, which I've linked in the description, so the rest of this video will focus on the weak and strong nuclear force specifically. In other lectures linked in the description, I discuss the exchange particles or bosons which mediate the four fundamental forces in particle physics. The rest of this lecture will just explain the basics of the weak and strong nuclear force. IB Physics also expects you to know something about exchange particles and bosons. In other lectures linked in the description, I discuss what these are and how they're related to the four fundamental forces in particle physics. But to cover those, I need to cover other aspects of particles, so this lecture will just explain the basics of the weak and strong nuclear force. The weak nuclear force causes nuclear decay. For example, it's the force that causes a neutron to emit an electron and antineutrino and become a proton. In IB physics, we'll mainly be worried about the weak force in the context of beta decay. So you'll remember that a neutron emitting an electron and antineutrino is actually an example of beta decay. What's actually happening here is that if you open up a neutron and see what's inside, you would find that it's actually made of three smaller particles called quarks, which we'll talk about in the next lecture. And what happens in the beta decay of a neutron is that one of the down quarks, specifically, releases an electron. And the force that causes that electron to be expelled from the quark is the weak nuclear force. And the weak nuclear force is also causing an antineutrino to be emitted. 
And because these are interacting with the quark, the quark also experiences a weak nuclear force in the opposite direction due to Newton's third law. So these particles are expelled and the down quark becomes an up quark. And when you have two up quarks and a down quark, that actually causes the particle to become a proton instead of a neutron. So that was an example of beta decay. And you can see that the weak nuclear force was responsible for that. It was responsible for those particles being expelled from the quark. So the weak force acts on leptons and quarks and hadrons because hadrons are made of quarks. Protons and neutrons are hadrons, so the weak force acts on them. So that's what you'll need to know about the weak nuclear force. The strong nuclear force holds nucleons in the nucleus. It prevents them from being pushed apart by the electromagnetic force. It acts on protons and neutrons, but does not act on electrons or other leptons. That's a really common test question. You have to remember that it acts on protons and neutrons, but not electrons. If the strong nuclear force didn't exist, the protons in the nucleus of an atom would just push each other apart with the electromagnetic force because they're both positively charged, so they would just move away. So there's this other force in the nucleus resisting that pull of the electromagnetic force that we call the strong nuclear force holding the nucleus together. The strong nuclear force doesn't only hold the nucleus together, but it also holds individual quarks in a hadron like a proton or neutron. So the strong nuclear force is also holding these in place. And a notable thing about the strong nuclear force is that if these start to separate, the strong nuclear force that they're putting on each other does not decrease as the quarks move away from each other. There's actually something special that happens called quark confinement, which this video doesn't really cover. But because of the increase in potential energy between these quarks, after a certain distance, if they continue to separate from each other, that energy will actually become new quarks that they'll pair with. So these quarks can never really escape being around other quarks. But we'll talk about that more in future lectures. So that's everything that you need to know about the four fundamental forces in physics.